Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. In this video or videos, most likely multiple, I'm going to be doing a disassembly on this car here. This is the ZD Racing, um, the uh, DBX10. Sorry, my printer just uh, fired up. Um, the uh, the purpose of this, I have not driven this yet, so I want to make sure that everything is properly lubricated, the diffs have fluid, uh, things of that nature, kind of just doing a check over on this. If you've watched the previous video, you know that I've already uh, done the tires, I've replaced the foams uh, with some good foams, proper foams. The foams that come in these are just a piece of foam that's wrapped in a circle and glued so you you don't have a consistent circle um, don't use those get rid of them right away it's a cheap item to replace uh, you'll also see that I uh, made holes at uh, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock in all four tires I also drilled two holes again uh, these would be in relation to the tires at uh, 3 and 9 o'clock in the rims to let air out of the tires so the tires can compress easily. Um, these feel like decent tires. They're a, a decent enough rubber. Um, I'm going to give them a try. It's basically a, um, a crawler style tire. This buggy looks like it's going to be a ton of fun and I'm definitely excited about uh, running it. But before I do, I want to make sure that, um, that everything is squared away because I've had uh, issues with um, cars coming out of China that were supposedly ready to run and uh, didn't have lube in the diffs, ring and pinion gears were dry as a bone, things like that. So I'm kind of going to give this the once over. I'll probably uh, open up at least one of the shocks. Um, I may rebuild all of them uh, with fresh fluid and just kind of get a feel for where things are. In any event, um, a good bit of this it won't have any sound. I'll probably just speed up the video just to show you the general disassembly assembly process of things and anytime something uh, interesting or important uh, rears its head I will cover that for you in detail and uh, anything I come across that needs to be addressed any tricks or tips I can give you um, I will make sure that that is here in the video so uh, sit back enjoy and uh, hopefully you'll learn something and uh, so will I about this new vehicle on the surface as I mentioned in the initial video on this it seems like an excellent car I'm, I'm really impressed with what you get for the money um, I paid a little more for it because I was pre-ordering if I had waited and got this on Banggood I probably would have saved forty dollars at least um, I think I paid about three hundred and it in actuality it's around uh, 250 dollars in any event I'm fine with that I got in on it early you know no big deal uh, so I'm taking off the body the body lifts up you take out the two pins um, and you can basically just you know tilt the body up so you can get at stuff but I need the body off and all that's involved in doing that is uh, disconnect these two rubber hoses, just pull them off here. Um, there's a M3 2.5 millimeter hex bolt on either side. They're kind of long. Just pull these two out. Um, might as well take off the wing. And then you can just remove, and there's a little spacer or two maybe. Yeah, there's two there's another one around here somewhere uh, remove the body unplug the roof light and it's away that's all there is to that so there's my other spacer so um, nice and easy so the next step I'm gonna do I'm going to remove the wheels and set them aside and uh, and then I'm going to start diving into the disassembly.
In the first video, I talked about how, you know, really nice this is once you pull the body off. Um, you've got a lot of potential to do other things with this vehicle if you wanted to. Um, you could put a short course truck body on here, a buggy body, whatever you want. Um, yes and no. Um, I have did some research and I took some measurements. Uh, you can't make this legal for short course even if you put a short course body on it. You can't race it in pretty much any roar class that I'm aware of. Now, if you race with a small club like I do sometimes, um, they kind of have a couple of classes of their own. Um, one in particular is called truck. It's based on any uh, all wheel drive uh, truck chassis. Uh, and this would definitely qualify for that. We, the only restrictions we run for that class is rubber tires, 2S battery, and started its life as a truck. I run a slash in that uh, class that I have massively modified. Um, if you go to playlists, there's a, uh, a neat uh, video on that. I'll put a link down in the description, kind of follows the evolution of that. It'd, it'd be a good series for you guys to watch if you're trying to learn about RC in general, um, kind of learn what you can do with cars and racing. Um, I've, uh, I've got some uh, race footage in a couple of those videos that I slow down almost frame by frame and use to analyze the vehicle's handling characteristics, you know, whether it's oversteering or understeering, um, how the car is leaning, how it's behaving, and then I make suspension changes to try to mitigate some of those issues. Um, it's a good way to, uh, to learn and tune your cars is to, to film your races um, and then go back and watch them carefully and kind of see what the car is doing. It helps you, uh, you know, kind of tune and sort things out, sort your suspension. Um, so, uh, as I was saying, I could use it for that class, but, um, it's really just going to be a fun toy for me. I'm probably not going to do anything massive to it. Um, I'm probably going to keep the body as is. I'm going to keep the style and size tires as is. I'm going to keep the suspension as is. I mean, I might, you know, swap out springs, change fluid, things like that. But I think I got a decent set of shocks here. They're dual seal. Um, the differentials are look to be good differentials in that they have two O-rings and a paper gasket at the uh, at the gear, uh, the ring gear. So. That means that they can be set up with any weight of fluid. It has a slipper clutch as well that is adjustable. Um, so that gives, you know, another point of uh, adjustment and tuning to the car. So I'm probably just going to make it a nice fun buggy that, you know, if I'm going to, you know, like let's say I was going to the beach for a couple of days, I would throw this in the back of the car uh, with, you know, my other stuff and, uh, you know, run this around on the hard sand by the water, you know, um, jump it around in the dunes a bit, just have a blast. And then take it home and take it completely apart and clean it because the sand would eventually destroy it if I didn't uh, do a thorough maintenance at that point. But, you know, that's the kind of thing that I'll, I'll be using this for. It's going to be just a, um, a fun running around buggy. I see myself keeping this for a long time and just having a good time with it. Um, when they are available, I will definitely pick up a few spares. Uh, I heard from uh, one of my commenters that they had already broken a front A-arm. Um, I, I should have asked exactly what they were doing at the time that it broke. I assumed that they were, uh, you know, jumping it hard or something like that uh, because these look to be fairly solid pieces. They're not going to break very easily. Um, but I would get a spare set of uh, steering knuckles. Uh, I would get these uh, the white pieces here. I would get a spare set of arms um, and uh, just throw those in a box with some other knickknacks. Um, 
I'm not gonna go get tons of spares, but that's the main things right there. Maybe a pair of rear hubs and a pair of rear arms as well. Um, just to have those on hand uh, in the event that, you know, I, I bang it up. Um, you know, I'm not gonna get a whole bunch of them. Like I'm not gonna get like three or four sets of arms. I'm gonna get a pair, you know, of all the replaceable items and just have that on hand because you know, like I said, this is a fun car. I don't think I'm going to do any uh, mods to it from the power point of view. It's got a decent uh, brushless motor. It's got a, uh, a decent um, speed control, 60 amp. It's capable of a, uh, of um, it's a 3S compatible and it comes with a nice 3S battery. I might get myself another one in this exact size from the same menu from ZD. Um, that way it's, uh, you know, I'm getting a hard pack and I know it's not going to have an issue as far as electronics go. Um, And uh, I know it's going to fit physically. I might even buy two of them, so I've got uh, you know three of them, so I can have one or two of them on the charger. Have one cooling, one on the charger, and one in the car running. And that way, you can pretty much just have you know a constant turnaround of uh, of fun. Um, I will probably swap out the receiver. Not that there's anything wrong with this receiver, but that that limits how many transmitters I have to carry with me because right now I've got. A bunch of these guys and uh, they don't give you the high-end uh, features that a better radio would give you and I've got um, a decent radio uh, that I like it's um, I've got actually two that I use once in Air Airtronics uh, another is the new fly sky six channel or five five or six channels um, I really like that radio and the uh, receivers are like $15 a piece. So anytime I pick up a new kit, I just grab a $15 receiver and stick it in there. It, it just makes life so much easier to have, uh, you know, I mean, what's the point of having a, a transmitter that has a memory for like, you know, 20 or 30 cars and then is expandable up into the hundreds of cars if you've only got one or two cars bound to it. So um, that's where I'm heading in that kind of thing. So. I just thought I'd kind of update you on, on that stuff. So now it is time to pull shock absorbers. Okay, um, just a little FYI, this is something I'm going to do. Um, you are free to do as you wish. Uh, I don't care for these. I mean, they kind of look nice, but this is the kind of thing that just collects dirt. Um, the plastic, uh, it's basically a sticker on these little reservoir things. Um, it eventually comes off. They don't do anything. Um, they just cover up the bleed screw here. And... Um, I am gonna just dispose of them. Same thing with the ones that are on the rear of the body. Um, also, we don't need this spacer here. Uh, so between this piece of plastic, this spacer, um, I can use a considerably shorter screw up here. I'll also replace this plastic bushing thing up here. Um, well, I may, I may not. 
uh, but what I may do is just replace that with a couple of washers and another uh, an aluminum lock nut and that way it's tight on here so um, when you want to take the shock off for maintenance you don't need to have you know a wrench at one end and a hex driver at the other you just undo the bolt with a wrench and uh, the assembly the screw and its um, washers and uh, lock nut stays in place because it's firmly tightened on here um, it's up to you how you guys decide to do that Captain, she's breaking up. She's breaking up. Space, the final frontier. Another thing you want to do, um, and this is another reason to take these cars apart is to make sure that everything moves smoothly um, you want to make sure that your suspension action doesn't have any binding in it and we also want to make sure that our drivetrain rolls smoothly now what I'm going to do right now and this is a very easy thing to do is I'm going to loosen the grub screw on my pinion gear and remove my pinion gear okay now the motor is disconnected from the drivetrain and I am spinning my suspension my uh, the full length of the drivetrain it it feels a little sticky I mean not, I wouldn't say sticky it just feels thick there's resistance somewhere so I'm going to be looking to see if I've got a stuck bearing or something like that. So I'll be taking this apart kind of a section at a time and figuring out where things are giving me a problem. I'm just going to stick that receiver right on there. In fact, I'm probably not going to stick it on the sticker here. I'll just uh, put it down there. And that way I know what receiver goes with what. Okay, let's move on to rear shocks. Okay, that's interesting. We've actually got two different pieces of hardware up here and here. Um, I don't know why, uh, probably just what they, someone had handy. Um, we've got two different types in the front. We've got regular button heads. And in the rear, we've got this type. I forget what these are called. Um, anyway, it doesn't really make a difference. It's just the wrench size. I will be making sure they are the same type uh, when I put this all back together. Uh, that way I've got um, the same wrench size in both places.
there's plenty of grease in there. Uh, so now it's time to open up the diffs and uh, let's just kind of get a feel for the, ooh, those diffs are, ooh, that's choppy. Yeah, that needs to be opened up. I wonder what the rear's like. Oh my God, these diffs barely work. Okay, that's a problem. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's not working. I mean, I, I'm, I'm twisting one and holding the other and I can barely just, it's like chop, 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 chop. I wonder if those, I mean, I haven't run this, so I don't know what's going on in there, but it's not gonna be good. Okay, it looks like the diff sp splits this way. So I'm not sure how much stuff I've got to take off to get in there. I'm guessing two screws here and these two screws here. I'll need to uh, remove that as well. Sway bar needs to come out. Now the easiest way is probably to take out these two screws and uh, lift the pivot points out. Okay, um, problems with the diffs. Let's start with, um, the general design is okay. Uh, I would prefer there to be two sets of, uh, of these small gears um, instead of uh, just one pair. Um, but, you know, it'll still work. Um, What's causing the grinding is the gears are just too tight. Um, 
we need uh, one of these uh, little shims behind either gear. Okay, now on one of these gears, there were three shims, and behind another, there were two. That really pushes those gears in against each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild this without any lubrication um, and just use one shim on either side and see how the gear lashes. If, if it's loose, is it still tight? Is it too loose? Um, we'll find that out shortly. And, uh, and then we can test again. So, let's see how this goes. Now, I'm not going to use the little C-clips because they're a pain to get in and out. Um, I'll have to take it apart anyway to put in diff fluid when I get to that point. So, I can assemble it without the clips for the time being, just for mock-up purposes. I forgot to put in any spacers there. Okay. One shim. shim on this side. Okay, that's beautiful. Got a little jiggle. I'm going to try putting in one extra shim and see how tight things get. And I think what I'll do is I'll start by clipping in the bottom. adding shims behind here.
Okay. Um, we do have a blow up, but it doesn't show us an internal on the diff. So here is the problem. Um, the diff was all choppy because there's at least one too many shims. And that's causing the gears to bind. Um, also, one of the gears or more may have been out of alignment with the uh, slight edge. There's um, there's like a reese uh, on the back side of these gears that these align to. And if, if it was outside of that reese or like pinned under the edge, uh, that would also force the gear further away. Uh, from this plate or from the back side of the case here, thus pushing all the gears together. Um, I tried it without with two shims behind each of these two gears, and it seemed like I had good movement without any jiggle. So I am going to try filling this with fluid now and uh, see how it goes. Um, I've decided that I'm going to run 15,000 in the rear diff and 30,000 in the front because I want a much stiffer front. I want more traction up front. We'll see how it goes. This is just a first setup. Okay, I'm having a tough time getting that lined up correctly. Let's try doing it like this. Okay, um, successful diff action. That is nice and smooth. There's no gear chop. Everything's rotating nice. I imagine that that's gonna wear in well. I'm gonna keep the extra shim just in case. Um, definitely light years beyond. I mean, it, it, it barely would rotate before and uh, it would have done serious damage. So um, if you buy this kit, definitely, 
definitely take it apart and check this because uh, it's not something you want to run up against. So now I need to do the front diff, but let's start by getting this back in place here. Get that extra grease. Might as well just use it instead of using the uh, the white grease. I can use that next time I do a rebuild here. I uh, take these diffs apart and change out the uh, the diff fluid for something heavier or lighter. So now what I'm going to do to reassemble this is put my diff back in place, lower my casing, there we go, and I'm going to put the two screws in there. I'm not going to tighten them down hard. I'm just going to get them snug. I don't want to be uh, having the case leaning to one side or the other. Let's get some black grease going for this.
There we go. Nice smooth diff action. Nice full rotation. One of the things you'll need to do is balance the tightening of these two bolts. And they are bolts. They are a 5.5 millimeter. They barely look like they've got a, uh, a hex head, but, uh, but they do. Um, and you unscrew them to remove them, and then you screw them back in. If you screw them in too tight, you're going to clamp down on the arm. So you want to make it so that there's no jiggle the arm doesn't move at the same time both arms need to move freely and be nice and smooth in their action so better to be a teeny bit loose because they're tightening into plastic so they're not going to come undone you don't need loctite or anything but you want to make sure that they balance each other and you've got a nice smooth up and down motion and now we have if i hold this gear still as you can see i've got a nice smooth diff action now it's not coming apart uh, or you know chopping and grinding because it, it barely turned before um, now we've got a nice smooth action and the entire assembly spins nice and freely all the way around so uh, we're good to go on this I'm gonna clean this up and uh, start into the front diff with a fresh batch of paper here on paper towels here so now as long as I'm here I might as well put this back in. Now I can finish tightening them by hand. Okay, now I'm not going to put the little spacer in here until I'm ready to put the top on because that'll just come out. So, same basic procedure here. I need to take off the bumper and uh, split the diff case and that kind of thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel.